Enjoy.
Good morning. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. If that doesn't get you rocking a little bit, I don't know what will. This is Monday morning, April 4th. Amen. This is the 0900 prayer request time. We're broadcasting away from the home this morning. Selma and I are, uh, I guess, on the last morning of our third anniversary little get getaway. And so we decided this morning to go ahead and broadcast for about an hour or so here from the hotel where we're at, we're staying. So, this is the 0900 Prayer because I like my new sign here, huh? <laughs> well, if you didn't get rocking on that little introductory, uh, Jesus on the main line, that's what that is, and... Uh, He's on the main line of our life. I hope he's on the main line of your lives. All right? This is the 0900 prayer request time. We're broadcasting from uh, right here in St. Charles, Missouri, down on Main Street. I'm down here at the one of the hotels here on Main. And uh, we're here because of our, so we're celebrating our third wedding anniversary, which was the second so we'll be heading home today, but we're right here in our hometown, so it's not a big journey back. So it's been a good time, refreshing uh, for Selma and I, just relaxing and uh, you know how you break out of the norm and just uh, just do something totally different. And that's basically what we've been doing here, just really relaxing and uh, enjoying ourselves and just taking delight in, in each other, more or less. And so it's been refreshing, renewing. Hey, hi there, welcome. This is the 0900 prayer request time. Amen, right here, look at how you like that sign. A little bit different, huh? This is the 0900 prayer request time. We're broadcasting this morning from a hotel here in uh, St. Charles, Missouri. Selma and I have been uh, celebrating our third wedding anniversary and our anniversary date was the 2nd of April and so we've been staying here at the local hotel uh, did a little swimming walking 
exploring a little bit and uh, just all around generally relaxing, enjoying a couple of days off from the normal routines of life. But today we're here again broadcasting, broadcasting from our room here in the hotel, really. But we'll be home this afternoon. Our home is right here in this town, so we're, we're not very far away at all. But I like my new little sign here. 0900 prayer request time. We had Jesus on the main line was the introduction this morning on the... Uh, I played that on the laptop, so if you replay this uh, video, you'll see it and hear it too. And I guess life is about that. Jesus on the main line. Hey, hi there. Welcome. This is the 0900 prayer request time. All right. There's my new little sign. Selma and I have been celebrating our third wedding anniversary. It was on the 2nd of April. We're still at the hotel here. We're getting ready to go home today. So we thought we'd broadcast today the 0900 prayer request time from the hotel room. And so Selma's over here reading, sitting, looking at, uh, reading her things and uh, listening to what I'm going to be talking about and saying today. But I guess I'm not talking about much because it's always about this same subject. Like I say to you guys every day at the 0900, 9 o'clock in the morning, it's 9 o'clock in the morning here in uh, St. Charles, Missouri. 9 o'clock in the morning, April 4th, Monday morning. And I know that most of you that uh, are on with me at this time are in the Middle East, and it's in the evening, late afternoon and evening. So good evening to everyone out there. And the 0900 prayer request is something probably that never changes, all right? And what doesn't change is the Lord listening and hearing your prayers when you call upon Him. He doesn't change. He doesn't change from yesterday, today, or tomorrow. He doesn't change because of some current uh, activity going on in the planet. He remains constant, the same, always the same. His mercy, having compassion for you and your life, your situation, it says it is passed from each generation. This mercy and love from God is passed to us, it, and it's been going like that for century after century. And only only God can do that, right? He's God. He can do anything He wants. He's not set in stone <laughs> like some people think He is, you know, the Buddha and the Catholics with their statutes and all that kind of junk. And really, that's what all that is, okay? It's just a lot of junk, because it doesn't get you anywhere. But praying to the living God does. Amen. Right here. 0900 prayer request time. My name is Missionary Norman Etter. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. I'm broadcasting from a local hotel today. Selma, my wife, and I have been married for three years. Our wedding anniversary was the 3rd. I'm sorry, the 2nd of April. And so today we're headed back. Hey, hi there. Welcome. We're headed back home today. But we thought we'd do this morning's broadcast. From here, from the hotel room where we're at. So we're about packed up. We did a little swimming, exploring, walking, and just had a nice time. A little windy today here in Missouri. But today's temperature, it's in the 60 degree Fahrenheit. It's a bright, sunny day. And so I know that a lot of you, it's the evening time in the Middle East and other parts of the, the world. And for those here in the United States, well, you're in the same boat with me. You might be a little colder, a little warmer, but but God's good. Amen? This is the old 900 prayer request time. Something that doesn't change. Something that doesn't change is prayer to God. You guys might think you're going to see something new when you come to this old 900 prayer request. I can't say anything more shocking than I've said to you before in the past. All these religious Protestants, the Roman Catholic, Islam, Buddha, and all the rest of these religions, there's supposed to be around 4,000 religions. So if I told you they're all meaningless, what would you think? You'd say, oh, no, that's a pretty powerful statement. You're offending a lot of people. No. The truth will set you free, and they're meaningless. The religious Protestants are the worst of the lot. You know why? Because they've just destroyed the meaning of the Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. 
Today's religion has nothing to do with Christ. It's got to, it's got totally to do with 101 psychology, how to coexist and get along with everybody, no matter what their deviant lifestyles like. They'll incorporate you into that church. You, they'll tell you, we love you. Come on. You don't have to do nothing. You have to repent. You have to do nothing. Just come on in. Give them a little of that money, and everything's fine. If you got a little title before your name, man, they'll roll out the red carpet for you, doctor, nurse, policeman. As long as you're making good money, that red carpet will be there for you. Right? Yeah, that's right. Especially if you got that doctor of divinity before your name, man, you can do anything once, say anything once, because you're just a at a God level, all right, the Protestant religionists. All right, you can't make a mistake. You're almost like the Pope's thinking you're infallible. It's all it's all hoodoo land, all right? Don't go to them Protestant religious churches. What you need to do is get, get close to the Lord, and that means the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. Draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. Don't look to anybody else. You get alone with the Lord. Sit down with the Lord. Get his book out. Read his book. Read the words of Christ. And then you say to Christ, just you and Christ, you say to Christ, Christ, help me to believe. Help me to understand. Help me to receive from you today. And I guarantee you, when you ask the Lord in the name of Jesus, his begotten son, you're going to get a response. And don't be waiting for that audible voice, but when you get done praying, seeking the Lord, You'll get away from wherever you're at, and let me tell you, God will leave something in your mind and in your heart as to the direction for what you're asking him about. That's a guarantee. You understand? It's called praying through. It's not something you got to beat yourself or put a bunch of beads on a string and repeat after each other or fast for nine days, think you're going to get something. No. When you bow your head and ask the Lord in Jesus' name, he's going to speak to your mind and heart. He does it every time. The only reason you're not hearing is because you're so bound up in your own worry and fretting that you can't hear nothing. You couldn't hear the doorbell ring, but ring, all right? But God's faithful. He'll answer you. You understand you've got to get quiet before the Lord. What's that, what's that mean when I say get quiet before the Lord? Getting quiet before the Lord means just that. Don't allow these other thoughts to come in about your wife, your kid, your husband, work, your situation in life. Just push that back. Don't let those thoughts and just say, God, I want to hear from you today. And just stand there and just like the little boy put his finger in the dike in Holland and stop that water from coming in and getting bigger, you got to stand in your own mind and say, I'm not going to allow my mind to wander about this and think about that. Just hold it. You can do it. That's a guarantee from God. You can do it. Don't You know, there was a guy in a Bible story, a guy had 20,000 demons, legions of demons inside of him. <coughs> People caught that guy, and uh, they tried to chain him with chains, and he'd break the chains, the old devil in him. He had so many devils. But yet when Jesus came in that boat and got off that boat and Jesus stepped on that land right in front of that guy, that guy come running out of them tombs. And that wasn't the power of God, that was the power of man. Stronger than the power of that devil that was inside that man. He wanted to be free and called on Jesus. So don't tell me you can't call on Jesus. You can call on him. Just like that song I was playing right at the beginning. Call on Jesus, Amen. Amen? This is the 0900 Prayer Request Time. My name is Missionary Norman Edgar. I'm here with Selma. We're in a local hotel here this morning. And we're celebrating our third wedding anniversary. It was the second. That was Saturday. Today's Monday. We're headed home today. Of course, we're. it's really uh, the, our home is right here in this town, so we're not far away. But it's kind of nice just to break away. And we did a little swimming today, or this past weekend, here at the pool. And uh, even Selma had to get in. It was a little cool at first, but we got the, we had to go get a little rubber ball, just like the beach ball, just like any other little child, and play in the water. All right? So when you get older, you get like a little kid, right? But it's refreshing. It was good for us. 
you got to break out of that norm sometimes, all right? And we did a lot of walking. We went to a couple of new restaurants and that we'd never been to. One passed, the other one not so much. You know how that goes, okay? Wow, and it cost a bunch, too. Things don't get cheaper, amen? This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys talking to God, right? Has God been talking to you? Did you pray to God this morning? Did you ask God for a little direction? Huh? Did you say, Lord, just establish my way today? Help me to understand what your will is for my life today? Is that what you asked the Lord? Are you giving it up for Jesus today? Right? This is the 0900 prayer request. This is my makeshift sign for today. Instead of my white chart, I don't have my periscope chart with me, map. But trust me, God's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Amen. If we got any prayer requests, if you got a prayer request, let God know your prayer request. Okay? Let God know. You don't have to you don't have to tell me. But it's about you talking to God. That's what it's all about. If you don't talk, if you don't ask, you won't receive. Guaranteed. If you just keep putting God off, well, he really doesn't answer me and he doesn't I don't even know if God's real and all this kind of stuff. If you keep <coughs> if you keep thinking that way, and if you're not talking, that's just like a, a husband or a wife or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. You see a guy out there you want to talk to, and if you don't ever initiate a conversation, well, you're never going to get to know that person. Right? You're never going to know. So you're going to have to say, hey, hi, how you doing? You know, that person might talk back to you and say, hey, I'm okay. Well, you'd be surprised when you say these words before God in the name of Jesus, his son. Help me. Establish my thoughts and my ways. God's going to talk to you. Guaranteed. It's not maybe he's going to talk to you. Oh, maybe he'll answer you. No. It's a guarantee from God. Every time you seek out the Lord, he's going to answer your prayers. All right? And he will. If you bow your head right now, you don't have to answer me. I see some. i got a couple of people on here looking. All right? If you bow your head and you ask God to establish your thoughts for today, let me tell you something. He'll establish your thoughts. And it might not be what you think it is. It might not be work-related or family-related or circumstance you're in. It might be something totally different. The Lord spoke to my heart in prayer this morning. I see I got somebody out there. Would you like to hear what God spoke to my heart this morning? In prayer, would you like to know? If you'd like to know, let me know. Chat in there, yes or no, if you'd like to know what the Lord, my prayer to the Lord was and that he spoke to my heart. Would you like to know what that prayer was and his answer? If you'd like to know, just let me know. Chat in there, okay? It'd be a yes or no if you want to know. This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys talking to God. Amen? Do you want to hear from the Lord? Do you want him to touch, you, touch your life and your situation, wherever you're at, and what's going on with you? Amen? Do you want to know? Do you really want to know what God's plan is for your life? Have you ever really thought about it? You know, would God really tell me? You bet he will. All right? But you're going to have to talk to him. Have you been talking to the Lord lately? Have you been saying, Lord, help me understand. Lord, open my ears. Huh? Have you? You see that sunlight coming? I can see it on my face here in my in my Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. Behind me is the Missouri River. Just right. It's just uh, half a block away. We're right on the river in the historic section of uh, St. Charles, Missouri. And this is the first capital of the state of Missouri. People came in here on steamship and boats and whatnot <coughs> on the Missouri River, all right? Well, that river here is running by, all right? And that river, believe it or not, is running contrary to the known laws of 
of physics. At this particular junction right behind me, the river's running north. In other words, it's running uphill. And you might say, well, how can that be? <laughs> well, if you look at a map, it's kind of got a twist in it right here. And so the water goes up and around and back down into the Mississippi and they join together, right? But right here, things are going in a way you wouldn't think possible. How can water be going up a hill? Well, that's the way prayer is sometimes. You might pray and ask God something and say, Hey, God, what's going on? What do you want me to do? What's the direction? <clears throat> what should my thoughts be? And he'll, he'll make something real to you. And you'll, you'll be thinking, Wow, that is so contrary to everything I know. It's like water running up the hill. All right? But God's got a plan for your individual life, just like he does for me. Again, would you like to know what God said to me this morning in prayer? You want to know what he left with me here at this hotel room this morning when I prayed? Would you like to know? Let me know. Say yes or no in that chat, and I'll, I'll share it with you. This is the 0900 prayer request. All right, We're broadcasting from a hotel, Selma and I, celebrating our Third wedding anniversary. It was the I Love God. Oh, okay, my man. Good, good. Would you like to hear what God said to me this morning in prayer? <clears throat> this is the 0900 prayer request. Okay. Who is that anyway? Where are you at anyway? Who am I talking to down there? Okay, I can't read you. Print too small. Where are you at? You in the States or outside the States? You in the United States? Where you at, man? Huh? Hey, hi there. Welcome to the 0900 prayer request time. <coughs> Where you at, my friend? What part of the world you in? Uh, Corinne from Israel. <coughs> All right, Israel. That's Karen, I'm sorry. All right, Karen. Are you Jewish, by the way, Karen? We got a little time delay here, I think. Karen, are you Jewish? No. Okay, great. It's almost time better. <laughs> okay. All right, look. This morning, uh, Selma and I were on our wedding anniversary, as I told you, our third wedding anniversary. I'm 70 years old and Selma's 68. And we, we, God led us together. Man, it's just great. I mean... True love is real, folks. Don't ever think it. And God's, God's the author of that loving, boy. If you think your, your true love is gone, you, you, you think it only happens one time in your life, don't believe it. It'll happen. Okay? But anyway, so here we are in a hotel. We're in the historic area of St. Charles celebrating our third wedding anniversary, which was April 2nd. And we're getting ready to go home today, but we decided we'd broadcast from here this morning from our hotel room overlooking the Missouri River. And so uh, Selma went down to the little uh, uh, breakfast area and had some some things to eat. And I was here in the room alone, so it's always a good time to pray. I tried to pray to have a nice fireplace and all that here. And I went out there this morning early, you know, and... Uh, it just, you couldn't pray through, shall we say, all right? So I was here in the room, and I said, Lord, what is it that you'd want me to think about today? And the Lord <clears throat> spoke to my heart one thing, <clears throat> and it was a two-part answer to the prayer. In the first part, of the, now I've been a Protestant missionary for 40 years, Four. Zero. Forty years. Protestant Christian missionary. That means we only believe in the Protestant Christian Bible and as being divinely inspired from God and only the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle, and Evangelist. No church doctrine, no church tradition, no Protestant denominational positional papers. None of that. All, all that stuff is meaningless. Only one thing. That's Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist. So I prayed this morning, and God spoke to my heart, <clears throat> and it was a two-part answer to the prayer. 
And he said, Walk before me as you have in the past, and I will walk with you. Okay, now that's kind of an ordinary thing, all right? But the second part was the kicker. And it was that I, me, and my wife, Selma, sitting right over there on the sofa. You want to see her? Well, here she is. <laughs> Can you see her over there? Where's she at? There she is. Hello. <laughs> All right. And uh, she said, uh, she said, <laughs> and God said, he said, walk before me, right? And I will walk with you, all right? Now, again, the Lord in prayer this morning made it clear. I've been a Protestant Christian missionary for 40 years. Five missionary tours in the Southeast Asia and seven years in Mexico. Now, I've been in, I've been a point guy for God, shall we say. I've been in the thick of it. Where people are cutting their heads off, people being murdered and killed. I was right there, okay? This is no joke. I'm not some guy... I've I, I just been in the point, been in the real stuff, all right? It's not some wannabe missionary. I'm a foreign Christian missionary, and, uh, and we've been in the firefights of life with communism, bandits, opium warlords, drug cartels of Mexico, the Zetas, cutting people's heads off, murdering other missionaries right there where in the city I'm in, was in, in Mexico. So it isn't... It isn't something, hey, hi there, welcome. It's not something, hi there, welcome. This is the 0900 prayer request. <coughs> and I'm sharing about what God spoke to my heart this morning. Where Selma and I are celebrating our fourth wedding, third wedding anniversary here. And our wedding anniversary was April 2nd. And we spent a couple of days. Hi, Ukraine, welcome. And uh, so our, we're here at the hotel, and we're getting ready to go back to our home, which is right here in the city, okay? We're in the historical section of St. Charles, Missouri, along the Missouri River. This morning, I was praying to ask the Lord <clears throat> if He would speak to my heart on this particular day. And the Lord spoke to my heart in prayer, saying that He would, that I was to walk before Him as I have in the past. All right, to walk before him as I have in the past, and he would be with me. All right, and then the second part of the prayer, and this is the important part, <coughs> and I shared this with Selma, was that God gave me the understanding that the second part of the prayer was that I had to walk before the Lord. You understand? I had to walk by faith. And as I walk before the Lord, He is walking with me. Right? The only way you can have a relationship with the Father is to believe that He exists. Okay? And if you're sitting back waiting for God to lay it all out for you, what your ministry and life and goal and destiny and purpose of life is, if you're sitting back waiting, well, I'll finish my degrees. <laughs> I'll learn to speak a little Greek or Hebrew or, or I'll get my associate degree or I'll get my master's. Or I'll get my doctorate. I'll finish this class. And it doesn't work like that. Uh -huh, really? In the things about God, you got to take that step of faith. Okay? You got to take the step of faith. And that's going to be a, that step of faith is going to be according to the truths in the Protestant Christian Bible. Not the step of faith of what you want to do. Oh, I want to be uh, this or that. No, we're not talking about that. We're talking about the things about God. If you're spiritually born again, if you're loving Jesus with all your mind, heart, and soul, as the Protestant Christian Bible says, and your neighbor as yourself, you got one goal in life, and that's to share the glorious gospel of salvation through Jesus Christ. And if you don't want to do that, you're a lost individual going to hell. Oh, yeah, you. <laughs> that's right. If that's not your goal in your life, as you're watching me on Periscope today, if you're sitting there watching me and saying, well, I don't, I don't think about people going to hell, 
Well, you're not a saved, spiritually born-again person. You're not loving God or Jesus. You understand? God created all of us. And he sent Jesus to save all of us. And if you don't care about your, if you don't care about me, if you don't care about your own grandbabies or your children or your neighbors, if they're going to die and go to hell and you don't care, you're not going to tell them, hey, I can help you go to heaven instead of hell. If you don't want to share the glorious gospel message of Jesus Christ, well, you're just, you're just as bad as all of them, all right? When you become spiritually born again, it's the love of the Lord in your life. You're going to tell people about the way of salvation. And if you're ashamed and embarrassed and don't want to tell anybody, well, God's going to be ashamed of you, Jesus said. Amen. It's not up to some preacher man. Didn't preacher man a do you? Hey, hello, hi. Tell me, I'm going to have you share a little bit, okay? Come on over here a minute. Come on. You look fine, honey. Come on. Come on over here. I want you to share a little bit. Okay, come on. Come on. We're going to have Selma share a little bit. This is, uh, I'm going to get her out of her comfort zone here. So if her hair is not absolutely perfect, guys, give her a break, okay? <laughs> All right, here she comes. I'm going to have her talk a little bit, okay? Come on, Selma. Hello, everyone out there. Morning or evening, whatever it is where you are. Uh, it is such a privilege to know the Lord Jesus as your Savior. So, this is the reason that Norman and I spend this time on Periscope. Hi. And uh, we just... Uh, have the love of God in our hearts for everyone in the world because when you're spiritually born again the Bible says the love of God is shed abroad in your heart and so we have that love for all mankind thank you for those hearts <laughs> and uh, so as a matter of fact um, yesterday when the housekeeper came to our room to clean the room for us, the Lord put it on my heart that I need to share with that lady about the love of Jesus. And uh, so, oh, thank you. Thank you. So, uh, a little bit later when I had an opportunity, I went and spoke with her, and we have some um, business cards, you might call them, that Norman made on the computer that says, it has our names, that we are Protestant Christian missionaries, has our um, website and, our, um, and Norman's email address on these cards. So, I just really felt like God wanted me to share with this lady, and so... I took her one of our cards, and uh, I told her, I said, I just really feel like God wants me to give you one of our cards, and I want you to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And um, I just really felt an intense love for this lady. And uh, so it's a, she took the card, and she hugged me and thanked me and uh, so it's it's precious whenever you are obedient to God and you do what you know he wants you to do and so I'm praying you know for this lady that she will turn to the Lord and uh, and be saved and that's our mission in life as Protestant Christian missionaries is to share the love of Jesus and the way of salvation with everyone who will have ears to hear. And it says in the Protestant Christian Bible that most people do not have ears to hear because they don't have a love for the truth. And that's so sad. Most people want to go on living their lives 
just the way they want to live it, uh, only being concerned about themselves and their family, about making money, about having fun, um, and just enjoying whatever kinds of sin that they enjoy. So, that's very sad and it's grievous. It says in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament that God does not want anyone to perish. And that means God does not want people to go to hell. And because we have that love of God in our hearts, we feel the same way. We don't want people to go to hell. But sadly, many people will. And hello, welcome. And Jesus tells us in this Protestant Christian Bible New Testament that sadly many people will choose that way instead of the narrow way, which is following Jesus. Jesus said, narrow is the way that leads to heaven. And broad is the way that leads to destruction. And that word destruction is talking about hell. There's only one way to heaven, and that is through faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Faith in Him and repentance, which is turning to the teachings of Jesus, the apostles and evangelists in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. That is the only way that a person's eternal destiny will be heaven. And all the other ways, all the false religions, all the false doctrines, all the false teachings are of Satan. And all of those will take you to hell. Most people, I've heard it said countless times, oh, God wouldn't send anybody to hell. God's a loving God. And that is true. And you know why you can say that is true? Because people make their own choices. God gives everyone free will. People to be free, to choose to love and serve him, are free to choose to follow any other God or no God at all and that's what most people do and that that is just a tragedy when we when Norman and I are out in public whether we're shopping or just going walking or wherever we are we are so conscious of all of the unbelievers around us hello welcome and sometimes, in, in a sense, we could say that we feel like we're very alone. And, and I'm talking about in a spiritual sense, because there's so relatively few believers who are spiritually born again. And the churches, the all of the... Protestant Christian churches. I'm hoping there's a few ex exceptions. Hello, welcome. But almost all of the Protestant Christian churches are not teaching the true way of salvation. They're just teaching doctrines of men and uh, just made up stuff. And 101 psychology. Huh? Yeah, Norman always says 101 psychology. Coexist. What am I talking about? I'm talking about salvation through Jesus Christ alone. The world believes that there are many, many pathways to heaven, but that is a lie of the devil. And do you know why the devil uses most people? To deceive others is because Satan's final destiny is hell and he knows it and he wants to take the whole world with him 
Satan was in the beginning an angel. He was a beautiful angel in heaven, the Bible tells us. And because of his beauty, he became proud. He was so proud of himself. And he decided that he wanted to be worshipped as God. And he wanted to dethrone God and take over the throne of heaven. So because of his rebellion, and he convinced many other angels to follow him instead of God, and they were kicked out of heaven because of that rebellion. And so now the Bible says Satan is the God of this world, and that's God with a little g. He is not God, not the true God. He's not the creator God. He's not the God of love, the God who wants everyone to go to heaven. But he is, you could say, an evil God. He is the author of all evil. Hello. He is the author of all lies. He is the great deceiver. And he is deceiving the majority of people in the world today so that they will end up in hell with him. Hello. So, give the example of American women being deceived about abortion. Oh, and killing babies. yes, uh, Norman, my husband. Um, by the way, all of you who have just joined in the last few minutes, my name is Selma Etker. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary, and my husband Norman and I we've just been married three years. And um, so, anyway, he just reminded me to share with you a great, great tragedy that's happening here in the United States. Deception. And um, I'm talking about the deception of the devil. The, there are millions, the figure here is somewhere between 50 and 60 million American women have been deceived by the devil in thinking that they have a right to kill their babies by abortion. And I'm always astonished when I hear or read of women who say, well, they have a right, it's their own body. They have a right to do what they want with their own body. It's their own choice. Hello, welcome. That's just incredible. They are saying, in effect, that baby is just a part of their body. They don't want to believe that it's actually another person. They're allowing the devil to deceive them by thinking... Well, it's just part of my body. I can do whatever I want. It's it's me. So I'm going to kill my baby. People, countless women, well, and, and doctors too, they say, oh, it's not a baby, it's a fetus. Well, what is a fetus? How does it turn into a baby if it's not a baby to start with? How, why, why do they want to have an abortion if they don't believe it's a baby that is going to become a child that they will have to take care of? That is unbelievably horrible. So think about that. Think about what the devil does to people, how the devil uses people to destroy life, both here on the earth and then also to destroy life so far as going to heaven you will end up in hell if you have not made that choice by faith in Jesus Christ to be spiritually born again and to be obedient to God the Father and his don't you think that abortions come from immoral sexual behavior? And it's <laughs> <laughs> well, certainly a lot of pregnancies 
maybe the majority of pregnancies do come from immoral sexual behavior. Um, but even a lot of them are from women who are married and they just, they don't, hello, welcome, are sadly to a lot of single women and they don't want the financial responsibility of taking care of another person. They don't, some of them just don't want to be bothered. They want to just go on living their life the way they want to live, be carefree, they would probably say. But I cannot imagine the guilt, the guilt of a conscience that has murdered a baby. Well, thank you all for listening. And I'm going to let Norman come back on now. Love you. Thank you, baby John. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> how's that for a little sobering thought this morning? Now, on this Monday morning, April 4th. Amen. God loves us. He doesn't want us to kill each other. Amen. And He doesn't want us to do it through dictators, religious wars like we have for century upon century. Roman Catholics killing Protestants, Protestant killing Roman Catholics, Mohammed killing people, Islam killing people, Buddhists, Hindus, whatever, whoever, India, they're warring, they've always been warring, everybody war, everybody's killing everybody. That's the norm of the people, you know. Oftentimes I see science fiction. Hey, I see science fiction movies where alien race comes here and says, you people on earth are going to kill each other, so we're going to have to put it into you. <laughs> you know, praise God. Even the guys write science fiction. This is the 0900 prayer request time. Amen. It's about you talking to God. My name is Norman Edgar, Protestant Christian missionary. Hey, hi there. Welcome. We're celebrating our fourth wedding anniversary down here at the Luxury Hotel on uh, Main Street in St. Charles, Missouri. Selma and I have been married for three years. Uh, April 2nd uh, is when we uh, is our wedding anniversary. So we are getting ready. Today is our final day here. And we're headed home. And we decide to broadcast this Monday morning. It's Monday morning, April 4th in St. Charles, Missouri. Time now is around, oh, quarter to ten in the morning. So I know most of you are around the world, or on the other side of the world, and it's in the evening. So good evening to everyone. But we're praying, talking to God for one reason. Right? It's about you guys. You praying to God. You out there in Periscope land. You that are looking in your little smartphone. Amen. God loves you guys out there, and he wants, God wants you, not me, it's not about me, it's not about my wife Selma, hey, hi there, it's about you, it's about you praying to God, the God of the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament, talking to Jesus, amen, can you talk to the Lord this morning, have you asked him to help you in your life, amen, good morning, yes, I want, amen. Okay, my man, yes, I want. Where are you at, man? What, what part of the world are you in? The one that just wrote, yes, I want. Where are you at, man? Hey, hi there. This is the 0900 Prayer Request Time. My name's Norman. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. Been one for 40 years. Five missionary tours in the Southeast Asia, seven years. Hey, how St. Louis. <laughs> hey, that's Taylor. Hi, I'm French. Okay, Mr. Frenchman, uh, welcome, I'm welcome, do you, Mr. French, do you, Mr. Frenchman, do you pray to God on a regular basis, and does God answer your prayers, does God speak back to your mind and heart, Mr. Frenchman, that's the question for you today, this is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you guys, and Taylor, you too out there. I saw your little picture come up there. You been talking to the Lord, or are you still running? <laughs> that's right, that's right. You're going to have to stop running, girl. Talk to the Lord, right? <laughs> Amen. 
All right, Mr. Frenchman, have you been praying to God and has he been asking or answering your prayers? I hope you can understand my English, Mr. Frenchman. Okay. This is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about you talking to God. It's 0900 in the morning. I don't see your word. I don't see your word. I don't see your word. Ah, I don't see your word. Well, I see that uh, you're having a tough time with English just like I would have a tough time with French. So, well, just know this, Mr. French man, that God loves you, man. If you, Mr. French man, if you talk to God, God will talk to you, Mr. French man, okay? God loves you. He want, God wants to communicate with the people of France. God wants to communicate with the people of the world. Okay? Okay? Thank you for your comments, okay? This is the 0900, 9 o'clock in the morning, but really it's going on 10 o'clock now. Central Standard Time in St. Charles, Missouri. We're down on the Missouri River, getting ready to go home this morning. Our little third wedding anniversary celebration is coming to a close. Saturday was our wedding anniversary, the 2nd of April. Today is the 4th of April. And like I say, we're down on the Missouri River. Uh, it's a little hotel overlooking uh, the Missouri River. And we had a nice time. Amen. So we're going to be back tomorrow morning again at 0900 talking to everyone again at the prayer request from our home office there at our home. My name is Missionary Norman Etter. I'm a Protestant Christian missionary. have been for 40 years. Founder and director of LAM, Light Amidst the Among Christian Outreach, Incorporated 1978. I've had five missionary tours into Southeast Asia, seven years into Mexico. Amen. Loving Jesus, loving the Lord, that's what it's all about. The Protestant Christian Bible is the only true word from God to man. And only the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament. How old are you? I'm 70 years old. And the Protestant Christian Bible, New Testament, is the only rule and guide for today. Selma, my wife, who's sitting right over here. I'm going to show you. Where's she at there? There she is. She's seven, uh, seven, I'm 68, hey, hi there, grandson, I'm 70, she's 68, all right, <laughs> we love the Lord, amen, we're going to serve Jesus, and that's it, we're not slowing down, folks, amen, this morning I prayed, and God said to me clearly, walk before me as you have in the past, and I'll walk with you, and the point that God made clear to me this morning, April 4th, was that I had to walk before him. All right? Thank you for the comments about my beautiful wife. She is gorgeous, I think. All right? God just made it real to me that he said to my heart again today, this morning, in this little room where I'm broadcasting from, God spoke to my heart. He said, walk before me as you have in the past, and I'll walk with you. But something God made clear is I had to walk before the Lord. In other words, I have to walk in faith. All right? If you're waiting for God to lay it all out for you in your life, well, I got news for you. You're, not, you're going to be on a treadmill going nowhere. All right? You got to take a step. Are you Baptist? No, I'm a Christian. Baptists are evil. All right? Don't you know that? The Baptist denominations of the devil... All right, just so you know, no qualms about it. Southern Baptists are demonic doctrinal people. They're, they're anti-Protestant Christian Bible. The Baptist people believe in predestination. Baptists believe that God selected them, the Baptists, to go to heaven before they were born. Okay? Predestination. Baptists believe in predestination. They believe God has selected them. Baptists believe they are the elect that God has predestined them to go to heaven. 
They don't need Jesus. They don't need the atonement because their their gospel message is predestination. All right? Non-denominational people aren't going to heaven either. Let, let me okay, let, let me be clear here, folks. <laughs> let me be clear. The old hey, good morning, guy. The only people going to heaven are the ones that Jesus said are spiritually born again. Okay, it's just that simple. Spiritually born again. All right? You're judging? I can I no, I'm telling you the truth, all right? Get this. There are no religious Protestants. There's no religious Protestants going to heaven. There's no Roman Catholics going to heaven. There's no Islam. There's no Buddhists. There's no Hindus going to heaven. Would you like to hear that again? Listen again. There's no religious Protestants going to heaven. The Protestants mean them all. You know, Baptist, Methodist, non-denominational, independent, uh, Messianic, Charismatic, Pentecostal, da-da-da, you name them all, okay? They're not going to go to heaven, you know why? It's 4.52 in France. Hey, okay. P.M., yes, it's nine, at 10 o'clock in the morning here. The only people that are going to heaven are the people that's been spiritually born again. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I doesn't get it. You can be baptized. Okay, look, let me tell you here. Get this. You can go to a church house and you can bow your head and close your eyes. And when a man says you're ready to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're ready to confess Jesus as your Lord, you can raise your hand. You can go to the front of that church house and you can cry your little eyes out all you want. You can get water baptized in Jesus' name and name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And you can read that word every day, all day. And no, and no more be saved than a man in the moon. You're a religionist. You're a Baptist religionist, a Methodist religionist, Pentecostal religionist. You're just a religionist, just like the Hindu, just like Islam. Jesus said to Nicodemus, you've got to be spiritually born again. Don't you realize that today, the reason the church is, do I love French? Yes. France is great. Is a great country. All right, everything's fine. Jesus loves all the people. Jesus came to save all the people, and the great gospel message of salvation is by the spiritually born again disciples of Christ going forth and telling the world the, the way of salvation. All right, the way of salvation is understanding grace, justification, and repentance. Uh, no, I don't speak French. Sorry. All right? This is the 0900 prayer request time. If you want to be a, a, a Christian religionist, go to the Protestant churches. They got, they're got they full of religious people. Good, moral, hypocrite religious people. I, I'm sorry, but that's just the truth. They don't no more care about winning souls. You can die and go to hell. They could care less. They're, the church is not interested they're not interested in saving souls, right? They're interested in you listening to their 101 psychology, how to coexist and get along with everybody, build a house for somebody, give them some clothes or canned goods, and that's it. Have a dental clinic or whatever and move on. And convert them to their religious denominational doctrines. That's what the Protestant religion is about. It's not about people being generally born again. You understand it's about saving souls from going to hell. There's no church today involved in that. They could care less. Missionary organization is a money grab. All right? All right? We have a our, our Christian situation, so-called Christian situation in our country is a pathetic mess. It no more represents the truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist, than a man in the moon. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry of every kind of different Protestant religion is P 
picked over everything in the Protestant Christian religion and made their own doctrine. Okay? <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but this is the 0900 prayer request time. It's about loving Jesus. It's about praying that you, you out there in Periscope land, that you in Periscope land, you, that's right, you that are making the comments back at me, right? Are you leading people to the truth of Jesus Christ and salvation? Or are you wanting them to join your church? No, yeah. I'm afraid you've been spoon-fed something that you think is correct. All right? That's the sad truth about it. Sad. Okay? I've been in this business 40 years, and there's very few. That's right. It is pathetically sad, the condition of the so-called Protestant religionists of not just the United States, but of Europe and Australia and Southeast Asia too, because all what's happened in the last 50 years, now mind you, I've been a foreign missionary for 40 of those 50, all you see in any country you go to is just a miniature version of the same pathetic Christian mess in the United States or Europe is what the, the missionaries bring. They don't bring the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. They bring their denominational doctrine into a country. And they just become another religion. People can't even say they're followers of Jesus. They gotta say, I'm a Baptist, I'm a Methodist, I'm this, I'm that. You understand? They're ashamed to say, I'm a follower of Jesus. It's like I gotta belong to someone or I'm not a real Christian. They're in so much condemnation and guilt because they've not been spiritually born again. They're just a religionist. Today's Protestant religionists are just like the Buddhists, or just like Islam, just like the Roman Catholic. There is no difference. They're just religionists. Good, morally good, decent, tax-paying, law-abiding people going to hell because they've not been spiritually born again because they heap teachers up around them that just warm their ears. There you go. See what I mean? Your comment just shows me that you're just in the world. Okay? You're in the world. You know, this is the 0900 prayer request. You often wondered, you ever wondered what it was like when Jesus walked on the earth and and the people screamed at him, screamed at Jesus, and they, they said all kinds of hateful things to Jesus. And you know, you ever thought about, here he is going along, and uh, people said, well, if you're of God, if you're a true prophet, if you're really the Messiah, you can come down. Okay, you can come down from that cross. People ridiculed Jesus just like you guys are doing right now. What do you think you guys would do to me if I was standing right there in your life and someone was throwing stones or rocks at me? What would you do? Would you pick up a stone and throw it at me too? And say, okay, now, come on, religious man. Let's see if you can stand this. Now, I believe you would throw the rocks. You'd feel good about it too. 
That's the kind of people that's here today. Okay? Hateful, spiteful people that come on what? The old 900 prayer requests. People need to be spiritually born again. And the only way you're going to be get spiritually born again is when you got people that's going to tell. There's millions of people like me that are spiritually born again. They're not pushing some denominational doctrine on people as the religious Protestants do. That would be the Episcopal, Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Episcopalian, the, the Messianics, Charismatic, Pentecostal. They're spiritually born again people that's not pushing their denominational doctrine, anti Bible doctrines, much like Billy Graham and Franklin Graham and all the rest of them. Okay? That's so sad. We're in a sad place. People don't understand the basics of grace. They have no idea what grace means. They have no idea of what justification really is. They have no idea of repentance. You understand? That, that's not taught. What's taught today in the Protestant Christian realm in mega churches is this coexistence doctrine of love everybody and accept everybody. They, they're clueless. It's just that simple. Clueless. This is the 0900 prayer request. All right? Every day I'm on at 0900. We're broadcasting. Selma and I had our wedding anniversary. And uh, our third wedding anniversary, and we're celebrating it. We're down here at the hotel down on Main Street, overlooking the Missouri River. We've been here. Our anniversary date was the 2nd of April. So we decided to stay here for a couple, two or three days, enjoy things, did a little swimming, a little shopping, restaurant exploring on our third wedding anniversary. And we decided today we're getting ready to check out, we have to check out here in a little bit. But we thought we'd just broadcast from the room that we're in. And uh, I use a Samsung Galaxy Tab 4 Nook. That's It's a 7-inch. It does the job, and as you can see, all right? And it's about sharing the love of Jesus to the world. And that's what, it, that's what it's all about. And the worst of the whole lot of the people is the Protestant religionists. They're the religious lost of the world. I've met them and have met them, and they're the worst because they got a little bit of knowledge. They think they know it, and they really are not saved people, and they don't even want to hear it. They're convinced their doctrine's right because it's been inbred in them through their cousins and everything else forever, all right? <coughs> all right? The 0900 prayer request time. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the Protestant religionist is of the devil. All right, the denominational, okay, the, the denominations of today, the religious Protestants of today are, are the work of the devil. It deceives people over and over and over and compounds it over and over. You won't hear the truth. You won't hear the truth. If anybody steps out of line, you receive just what people down here are chatting, saying the evil things, how evil I am, how horrible I am. If you say anything against the Protestant religion, I guarantee you, here's the way it works. Here's the way it works, guys. You go to a Protestant church, it don't make no difference. You just let your little fingers do the walking in the yellow pages, right? Pick out anyone you want in the Protestant religion's church, anyone you want. Pick it out. Call that person up on the phone. If you get to talk to the pastor, which you probably won't, get that voicemail a hundred times over. And you ask them, say, hey, what, where's your, what's your general doctrinal statements and beliefs? Where can I read them at? And a lot of times they don't even want to tell you anything like that. They'll just say, we believe the Bible. <laughs> well, the devil believes the Bible, right? But you get to the doctrinal statements 
you get past all the hoodoo talk in it, and then get down to the brass tacks, the nuts and bolts of what their actual spiritual beliefs are, you'll see that it's anti-Protestant Christian Bible truths of Jesus, the Apostle, and Evangelist. And then, when you see the plain Jane scriptures that are contrary to their stated beliefs, and then you ask them, say, would you mind explaining this, uh, your doctrinal view in regards to what the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament truths of Jesus, the Apostle and Evangelist? Would you mind explaining that? You know what you're going to get? <clears throat> you're going to get a lot of hoodoo double talk. And at the bottom of the line, here's what the old Protestant guys are going to say to you. It don't make no difference who they are. Methodist, Baptist, Presbyterian, Pentecost, it doesn't make any difference. They're going to tell you this. They're going to come right down and they're going to say this. Well, this is our belief. This is our denomination. And this is how we interpret the New Testament. And if you don't like it, hit the door. And that's the way it is. And they all tell you, oh, yeah, we love you, da, da, da. You understand that that's the pathetic mess called Protestant religions that we have today. That's just the way it is, folks. If you think I'm hoodoo, check it out. Check me out. Listen to Billy Graham. Listen to Franklin Graham. Listen to Billy Graham on YouTube. Go to YouTube, type in Billy Graham and uh, Schuler. Reverend Schuler, type it in and listen to Billy Graham say you don't even need to know Jesus to go to heaven. They, them Baptists are a phony balonies, man. They no more believe in a Protestant Christian Bible than a, new, than a man in the moon. It's a, a, but so many people are so gullible, they'll believe anything. You understand? I can tell you that. That the world is, you know, science. I had people tell me, oh, man, we believe in science. Well, science said the world was flat. And if you didn't agree with it, man, the Protestant and the Roman Catholic, they'd string you up to a, to a stake and set fire to you. That was a couple centuries ago. Do you realize today science is saying just last week, two weeks ago, I read in the papers in the United States of America, science is saying this government of the United States is saying that they're looking in the ways of bringing criminal charges against some people that speak and, and are climate deniers, climate change deniers. They're thinking about bringing criminal charges. That's the science, right? It's the same science that kills babies and over millions of them think it's okay. It's the same people of this country that enslave a whole nation of people. It's the same country that dropped two bombs and annihilate grandmothers, granddaughters, grandsons, babies, dogs, cats, houses, bedrooms, in 250,000 people, their house, their cars, everything annihilated through atomic bombs. This is our Judeo-Christian foundational country, which is a bunch of junk. You ever believe we're founded on the Judeo-Christian Bible? you got to be a little bit above the imbecilic mark. You understand our, our whole system is, is of the devil in the United States of America. I realize that sounds terrible, but it's the truth. Our three branches of government are set up to coexist. You have the separation of church and state, church and state, separate, right? And the Bible is clear. It says to love God with all your mind, heart, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. All right? Well, this country thinks that they're founded on the Judeo-Christian values, and yet we have a separation of church and state. And the church, the founders who wrote the supreme law of the land, the U.S. Constitution, wrote in there these Judeo-Christian guys. Do you think they're Judeo-Christian? you think these guys are loving God above everything else in their life, in their neighbor? Enslave all the African people and brought them to this country and change and kill them and beat them? You think that's Judeo-Christian values? You think Judeo-Christian values makes the separation of church and state where all religions are equal, Satanists are equal with Christians, Buddhists is eagle with Christians. 
atheists are equal, everybody's equal, you think that's based on Judeo-Christian values? Well, you're a little wacky if you think that is. Do you understand we got nine Supreme Court judges? They, they're based on Judeo-Christian values? Humbug! You know something? They all agree. All nine of them agree to one thing. They coexist. They say if a majority votes, the majority wins. Right? If they agreed to that beforehand. Well, what if I was to say to you, well, I'm a Christian. I'm a born-again believer. I love the Lord Jesus with all my mind, heart, and soul. But if my wife and uh, let's say some other people in my family say, oh, no, we don't agree with that. Well, I guess I got to let it go and go with my wife and the group. It's this Protestant thing in the United States of marriage, Judeo-Christian value, is hoodoo talk. We're an evil country. 50, 60 million American women killing babies left and right and think nothing about it. And everybody thinks it's okay. You don't hear nothing about it, but you hear about some ISIS guy cutting off the head of somebody and we're about ready to go to war. <laughs> we're in hoodoo land, people. I got to be back tomorrow. Amen. Oh, 0900 prayer requests. <laughs> yeah, Selma, you cannot believe the hateful talk that's coming across you. Just hateful. Okay? <laughs> Just hateful. Why do you guys come on here anyway? Do you know why they come? You know why do you, why do you think they come back here, Selma? So they can stand against God, I guess. Just terrible, you guys. This is the O nine hundred prayer. If you don't like what you're uh, seeing or listening to, shut it off. What comes to my mind is the scripture: "They love men, love evil." They yeah. evil, they won't come to the light. Yeah. If you don't like the 0900 prayer requests and what I'm saying, tune off. Okay, it's that simple, guys. Why do you waste your time? But you know it's the Holy Ghost touching your heart, saying, hey, you need to repent. All right. Okay, guys, it's the 0900 prayer request, and we got to go because we're headed home, our little... April 2nd wedding, third wedding anniversary is over, okay? And we've had, uh, Selma and I have had a great time, really, celebrating our third wedding anniversary. And we decided to, this Monday morning, before we check out of our hotel room, to broadcast here from the hotel. We're here, and oh, right behind me is the, this is the, Missouri River right behind me. It's only about a half a block away. And so we've been on the uh, Periscope now. I've been on every day at 0900 and uh, sharing the way of salvation through grace, justification, and repentance. And that's the only one. Okay. All right. Isn't it something that I I deal with people? I deal with people that are just <laughs> Do you realize that one person that you lead to Christ might be you? Okay. Do you realize that? God loves you guys. You can be as hateful and say all kinds of hateful things you want. You're millennials and you're Generation X. I'm 70. But I want you to know something, guys. You millennials out there in Generation X, you're you're more intelligent than I am. You have more knowledge than I do. And I freely admit that. But one thing you don't have, and the one thing you don't even hear in your life because you're not involved in church, you're not involved in the things of God, you don't read the Bible, all right? 
okay? You don't read the Bible. You, you're clueless about a lot of things. Now, if you want to hear some good time talk, sweet talk, make you feel good, then go join the mega church. Go out there and join one of those religious Protestant churches. They'll love you, man. You'll feel good because you won't have to do nothing except pay them some money, and you can be their Christian all day long. But if you want to know the truth of salvation, of being spiritually born again like Jesus told Nicodemus, you understand, people got this idea, all they got to do is say, I love Jesus and I accept him as my Lord and take it on by faith and be water baptized and read the Bible and be a good person. And they think they're spiritually born again. They're not spiritually born again. They're just a religious Protestant. That's all. Okay? You got to love the Lord. Amen? That's what it's all about. Okay? You... Generation X out there, you millennials out there that are tuning in today, saying all your things today. Just know we love you guys. Okay, that's all there is to it. <laughs> all right? You're going to hear the truth, man. You want to hear some milk toast, wishy-washy gospel message? Then go join your Protestant religionist churches. And you guys, you guys can go join your West Barrel. Is that West Barrel? West Barrel? How do you say that? Baptist Church? West Barrel. West Barrel. Yeah, you can go join that. That'd be good for you guys. You can hate all you want in that church, right? Yeah. <laughs> you Baptists, go join it. All right? <laughs> Amen. Hey, that's it. Amen. I love the Lord Jesus. My name's Norman. Okay, guys, eat your hearts out. We love you. Okay, we're going to see you again. Remember, it's the 0900 prayer request. And thank you for tuning in today. Today you're going to hear the truth because the truth is in Jesus. You need to repent. You need to understand grace. You need to understand justification. Now, get this. You can say all you want to say. Make all your little smart remarks down there. But the bottom line the bottom line is this, guys. When you become a Christian, it's going to be between you and the Lord. Okay? You and the Lord. There's nobody else involved. Missionary Norman's not going to be involved. Some pastor's not going to be involved. Your mommy, your daddy's not going to be involved. Your girlfriend, your wife. Your husband's not going to be involved. The day that you become spiritually born again is going to be between you and the Lord only. Okay? There's nobody else involved. Okay? I mean, you can say and do anything you want. Now on the Periscope, you can do anything you want. What's going to happen when you become a spiritually born again Christian it's going to be between you and the Lord. It's going to be you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And you are going to understand grace, justification, and repentance. Those three things. That's the foundation of being spiritually born again. When And because grace, justification, and being spiritually born again is not even talked about in the Protestant religionist churches today. What you hear today is a coexistence, let's all get along message. A pick and choose what they want to believe in the Protestant Christian Bible New Testament. That's your Protestant religionist. And if you say anything opposite to that, well, just reread. <laughs> I save all my broadcasts on how to become a Christian today.com. Just replay this broadcast and you'll see all the hate talk that comes on here from religious people. You understand? They just show you they're not spiritually born again. They're jealous, spiteful, hateful people. They're not spiritually born again. This is who I deal with all the time. All right, it, it's it's just the simple. They're the they're the Pharisees and scribes of today, just like Jesus ran into. It's the religious people. They're the hardest ones. All right, 
They just don't have a mind to hear anything. <coughs> Look, I got to go, folks. See you tomorrow, 0900 prayer request time. God loves you. Selma and I love you. We're going to continue with the message, Lord willing. All right, see you guys tomorrow, okay?